Mazzy, Ricky, it's an honour to welcome you all to the Sydney Opera House. It's the very first time. Oh, I'm honoured to be here. Yeah, this is it's a blessing. The honour is all ours. I suppose one of the first questions I wanted to ask you is, uh, many in history have used music as a way of rebelling against previous generations and in some cases their parents. Did you imagine now you'd be playing in the same band together and collaborating on stage? Well, you know, um, I, I feel like Kamasi realized that early on that I made a, I made a sacrifice to, to teach mm -hmm. so that I could uh, raise a family. And he realized that I wanted to, I wanted to play, but a lot of my friends um, who were playing, they left their families. They had to choose one, two, and I stayed. And so I think, you know, Kamasi realized that when I retired from teaching that I had an opportunity to play, you know, and I still had my chops and I still was working toward it. So Kamasi asked me, he said, look, you know, now that you've, you made the big sacrifice, um, you got a shot with me. And I, I'm just grateful, you know. Yeah, I remember being a kid and just wishing Pops would go out and play more. I used to always try to get him to go out to the jam sessions with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's more of an early person, I'm more of a late person. But it was so, it was kind of like, you know, I had this opportunity to go on the road. It was like, well, here's a perfect opportunity, you know, you're retired now, mm -hmm. you know, let's just go play. And with you being an early person and yourself, Kamazi, being a late person, what's it like being on the road together? <laughs> We see each other in the daytime, <laughs> around five o'clock. <laughs> you know, Kamasi is very dedicated to what he has to do, and he's going to get it done. He's going to stay up to it till it's done. You know, that's the kind of determination you have to have to be on top of your, your, your of your A game. Mm. See, Kamasi has seen me practice a lot. He said, you know, when early in the morning or late at night, I would be practicing, not watching TV, not hanging out, but practicing. You know, seriously practicing, and so. I think he's doing the same thing until it's done. He's going to work at it. Mm. And do you find your relationship has changed over the years now that you play together? Well, you know, I think, you know, we get along very work really well. It's fun to, to, to we both play tenor saxophone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I play soprano flute in the band. Kamasi plays really great soprano saxophone as well. For me, it's let's work together, do the best that we can, you know, I want to make sure that I, I'm pulling my part, doing the best that I can. That's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to work together. We're supposed to, 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 to um, ask each other questions and have the, the ability to, to pull our resources mentally and physically and musically. share similar musical tastes. I know in your early years, Kamazi, you were playing with Snoop Dogg and you were kind of had a bit of a, a hip hop background. Do you guys listen to the same music? Do you go to the same shows together? I mean, a lot of the music that I, that I listen to, he turned me on to. Mm. Maybe more recent times, I turned, him on, turned him on to some music. Um, you know, like growing up, my, my first record collection was his, <laughs> you know, so we're both pretty open-minded musically. So there's not a lot of music in general that I go like, oh, I don't like that. You know, there's just kind of different levels of liking it. <laughs> yes. So most of the music I hear, I'm kind of, I give it a chance and I try to understand what it's supposed to be and what it's trying to be. We don't have the same musical taste, but my musical taste definitely comes from him, so it's definitely similar. Mm. I think Kamasi is how Poppy helped me listen more to hip hop and rap mm. more. You know, I, I was a pretty much a jazz enthusiast, jazz, <clears throat> R&B, funk. I think. To be a real musician, you have to be able to embrace all forms of music, and I think Kamasi is really serious about giving every 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 genre of music a chance in the in the ear and the mind and the soul. Mm. And I think I'm the same way. Yeah, one of one of the bit of beneficial aspects of my upbringing, I felt like was I really was able to kind of do what I wanted to do. You know, I never really felt pressured. It's something I feel like is important that like you know we each are our own person and like. You know, when I have kids, I hope I'll be able to do the same way, like to kind of let them be who they are and let them find their way. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so even like when I got into jazz, I was about 11, 12. My dad wanted me to get better on clarinet. I had been switching instruments kind of periodically. Mm -hmm. And I got to a place where I was in the middle of kind of learning clarinet and it's in the middle of it. I'm like, oh, I want to play saxophone. And, you know, as a parent, it makes sense. They're like, no, nah, why don't you keep doing what you've been doing and then switch. But I kind of knew at a certain point that I wanted to play saxophone. And he left his saxophone out one day. Yeah, he didn't even know. I just took his saxophone <laughs> and started playing it, you know. It was like the teacher asked, like, hey, does anyone have a tenor? I was like, oh, I have a tenor. And I woke up in the morning, went in the little instrument closet, took his tenor, and <laughs> just went on to school. And I didn't even think anything of it. I came home and he was in a panic. Like, oh my God, I think somebody broke into the house and stole the saxophone. He was like, is that the saxophone? I was like, oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> you know, but uh, even that, like, he was, you know, like, instead of him being like, no, I told you no. Mm. When he saw me play the saxophone and he saw that, like, I was lit up and I, I, I wanted to do it. He was like, all right, well, he took me to his brother's church and we <laughs> joined the band. <laughs> and it was like, this is what we're doing then. We're playing saxophone now then. Let's go. Yeah. Does Kamazi still surprise you to this day? Uh, you know, I haven't told him I said this, but I'm really, really happy Kamazi stands up for right things. And when we were younger, um, we used to have conversations at the dinner table where he learned, learned about his culture and he learned about being a good person. And with the harmony of difference, he talks about there's a place for everyone in the world. And sometimes there are places when, when he says that, the people are not necessarily thinking the same way. And he has the courage to say that there is beauty in diversity and that every culture, there's something beautiful about every culture. And he says that at every show. And I was like so happy, really, really happy that, that you have the courage to stand up and say it. You know, those words, the harmony of difference, are some beautiful words. I mean, that's, that's poetic to me. I was really surprised that Kamasi, you know, felt the same way. I mean, you know, I felt that way too, but Kamasi actually presented it to the world. And that's, and I'm really happy about that. Well, thank you for being here. This is in the Opera House, and it's a beautiful message to be sharing oh, with the world. Thank you.